Today we're going to talk about Veribles, a type of vampire cryptid from Latin America, known for its unique double fangs and long matted fur and... Variables? Well, now I have to rewrite the whole script. Hello everyone, it's nice to see you. My name is Noah, and welcome to Arcade Games. Today we're finally going to start programming by talking about variables and data types. By the end of this video, you'll know what variables and data types are, how they are used, and the most common types of data you'll see in Godot. There will also be a few smaller nuggets of information sprinkled throughout, such as how to build your project and C-sharp naming conventions. So I hope you stick around to the end. Anyway, let's get started. Every computer program in existence, from the most boring accounting software to the most cutting-edge AAA games, are little more than fancy calculators, and all consist of the same two pieces, data and operations on that data. While there are usually many ways to represent data and many ways to do operations on it, everything ultimately comes down to those two concepts. In C Sharp, the most common data representation you'll work with is the variable. A variable is a label for data that can be changed. Think of a game where the main player character has health. Health can go down when the character is damaged, and it can go up when they collect a health power-up. How would we represent a character's health in code? The answer is you'd make a variable, likely in your player character script, and you'd name it something like health. You'd then be able to assign that health variable a value, that you could then subtract from and add to. We're going to see how this would work in just a second, but before we can make a variable in our code, we first need to discuss a closely related topic, data types. Data type is short for type of data, and we need to assign one to every variable we make. There are several reasons using data types in any computer program makes sense. Here are a few that should make sense to beginners and experts alike. Memory management. Different types of data use different amounts of memory. A whole number takes less memory than a decimal number, for instance. By defining the data type in our code, it helps our program utilize resources more efficiently, allowing our game to run on a wider variety of systems. Optimization. A lot of behind the scenes work takes place when we build our program, and one of the things it does is optimize our code based on how it is written. Knowing the types of data up front, our compilers, the things that handle the building process, can find faster ways to interpret our code than we may have written it. Type safety. By specifying what type of data we expect our variables to have, we can catch errors at compile time, which again is when our code is being built, or even earlier if we have a good IDE. No more do you have to run a program only to get a vague error message you ultimately have to track down yourself. Operation validity. Similar to type safety, you can only perform certain operations on certain types of data. Any errors in operations can be caught by the compiler or your IDE before they become a problem, greatly increasing the reliability of your code. C Sharp has a lot of different data types, and I encourage you to check them all out. I do have a link in the description. The ones you'll encounter the most as a beginner in Godot are int which stands for integer, and is a data type to represent positive and negative whole numbers. So numbers like 0, 2, 573, and negative 34 are all integers. Integers can hold numbers ranging from about negative 2 billion to around positive 2 billion. Float stands for single precision floating point number. Basically, it's just decimal numbers. So numbers like 12.35, negative 101.998, and 3.14159 could all be floats. Floats can handle between 6 to 9 significant digits, which means numbers before or after the decimal point. Next on the list is double, which stands for double precision floating point number, and it is a decimal number that can handle 15 to 17 significant digits. Like its name implies, however, it takes up double the memory of a float. So, when should you use float, and when should you use double? Always use float. 
Doubles are only required for applications that need an insane amount of decimal precision. There's nothing in video games, including physics calculations, where you'll need that level of precision. In fact, the only reason I'm even bringing up doubles in this video is because you've already seen them. Here. This thing called delta is actually a variable of type double. Godot uses the double data type here because, well, honestly, it's stupid. It's one of the stupid things Godot does. You can love something and still not think it's perfect. That variable and what it represents and how it's used, it should be afloat, and double should be reserved for financial and scientific applications, and don't belong in 99.99% of games. Next, we have bool, which stands for boolean. A boolean can be one of two values, true or false. That's it. It's the simplest data type in this or any other language. It may not be immediately obvious why this data type is useful if you're a beginner, but trust me, bools are great and you'll be using them all the time. Each of the data types we've discussed so far are called primitive data types. Primitive data types are as simple as data can get in a C-sharp program. There's nothing that makes up a number or the values true and false, they just are what they are. You, as a programmer, will eventually use combinations of these primitive data types to make your own complex or user-defined data types. Those will be a few videos from now, but I feel it's an important topic to bring up because of the next data type we need to discuss, which is... Strings. Strings are words and phrases, and Godot uses them everywhere. Strings are used like a primitive data type in C-sharp because they're so common, but they're really a complex data type made up of X number of a different primitive data type, char, which is short for single character. You won't encounter chars in many C-sharp programs these days, as single representations of characters are usually just strings. That way they can be added to and changed without causing a bunch of type mismatch issues down the road. So, link in the description to Microsoft's C-sharp data types reference that you can bookmark and use as needed. There are a lot more types in C-sharp than we covered here, but honestly, the only other one you're likely to encounter in Godot at any point is called Ulong. So feel free to look that up if you're curious. You likely won't run into it as a beginner, but curiosity never led to anything negative save for feline murder. That resource will also give you the upper and lower limits of each data type. But don't stress on trying to memorize those. These days, the limits are so large, you'd have to try your hardest to run into them. For instance, the upper limit of the U-long that I just mentioned is higher than the number of seconds that have passed in the universe since the Big Bang. That's true. It's not a joke. So, you're probably good. Alright, that was a crash course in data types, and now we're going to get putting that concept together with variables so you can see how they work. So here I have an empty Godot project, and I'm going to add a character body 2D to represent our player character. Uh, this yellow warning sign in the scene tree means that I need to add a collision shape. And so I am just going to add a simple rectangle just so the error goes away. This series is all about programming in C sharp in Godot. So we're not going to go over every nuance of the scene tree and adding nodes. If you're interested in the Godot Basics series, let me know and I'm happy to oblige in the future. But for now, I'm going to encourage you to get some of the basic Godot knowledge from other beginner courses. Next, I'm going to rename my character body 2D to player character. And with it still selected, I'll click the Add Script button. Player character is already in there, and that's exactly what we want. C-sharp naming conventions want all of our class names, and therefore our script names, to follow Pascal case, which is where all of the words are scrunched together and every word is capitalized. So this is perfect. We have C-sharp selected in the language, so let's create this script. And now that everything's finished loading, here we are in our player character script, looking at the C-sharp boilerplate. Notice how this script inherits from character body 2D, since that's the node type we added our script to. To start, let's get rid of the using system using directive and remove the process method block. We're not going to be dealing with those in this lesson. The ready method is where we're going to do our work today. As you can see from the comment above it, this method gets called whenever the node it belongs to is added to the scene tree for the first time. That includes when we hit the play button in the engine to test things out. So it's a good entry point. 
Going back to our character health example from before, let's make a variable of type int to use as our character's health. Oh, and as we continue, my IDE loves to add underlines of varying colors that mean different things. Try not to worry too much about those and instead focus on the sound of my voice. So let's add that variable. And that's it. We now have a variable named health. We start by telling our code what data type we want, in this case, int, the name of our variable, and then a semicolon to end the logical statement. Remember, semicolons are to C-sharp code what periods are to sentences. When we add a variable to our code like this, it's called declaring a variable. This variable isn't going to do much unless we give it a value, however, and we can do that like this. Here we are telling our code, assign the value to the right of the equal sign to our variable to the left of the equal sign. In this case, assign the value of 10 to our variable health. This is called defining or assigning our variable. Since a variable declared in a method can't be used at all unless it has a value assigned, having these two statements be separate is sort of silly. We can combine our declaration and definition like this. Beautiful. All in one line, we are saying, I want an integer variable named health, and I want to assign to it the value of 10. Since we're going to play with this variable for a minute, you'll want to see the results of our various calculations. In order to do that, we'll need to print values to Godot's output console. To print the value of our health variable, we'll type gd.print, and then in parentheses, health, and we'll make sure to end that in a semicolon. Let me break down what this means. gd is a public class, meaning that it can be referenced outside of itself, which is found in the Godot namespace. Within the GD class is a public method, so it can also be referenced, called print. The way the print method works is that anything you put in the parentheses that can be interpreted as a string, and in C-sharp, ints, floats, bools, and of course strings can all be interpreted as strings, will print in the Godot output console. This is extremely useful for debugging, and we're going to use it to keep an eye on our health variable. Save your script in your IDE, and move back to Godot. We're going to build our project. There are two ways to do that from here. We can click this hammer icon in the upper right corner, which will build our project without running it. We can also click this play button right here that's on the clapper board. This will run the scene we currently have open, but we'll build the project before it runs as long as we save some changes in one of our scripts. Let's click back. If you haven't saved your scene yet, you'll be prompted to do so. I'm going to name mine the same as my primary node. I like the consistency and absolutely despise snake face. And we'll get an empty window once this pops up, since our scene doesn't really have anything in it. However, check the output console down below here. Sorry, I don't really have a way to zoom it in. But you'll see a 10 has printed. That's the value of our health variable. Neat. Let's return to our script and have some fun. We're going to declare two more variables. One we're going to call damage, and we're going to give that a value of two. And we're going to declare another one called heal ant uh, to represent heal amount, and we're going to give that the value of three. Variables in C Sharp are named using camel case. It's just like Pascal case that we mentioned earlier in the video, with all the words scrunched together, but in camel case, the first word isn't capitalized. Now we're going to do some math on our health variable. Let's damage the player. Using these variables, how do you think that would be done? If you need to pause the video and take a second to think about it, please do. Okay. So we already know how to assign values to a variable. We can also assign the results of mathematical formulas to variables. So what we'll do here to damage the player 
is we'll type health equals health minus damage semicolon. This says take the value of health minus the value of damage and assign the result of this mathematical formula to our variable health. Let's copy and paste this a couple more times just to damage our character even further. What do you think the value of health is after having been damaged three times? Pause the video and step through it if you need to. Let's print the value to check our guess. So again, it's gd.print and health in the parentheses. Save your script and go back to Godot. Once you're back, play the scene as before to check the value. We'll get our blank window. Our first print statement does its job by showing us the initial value of health, and right after that we see the result of our damage. The player has four health remaining. I think our character needs some heals. Take a second to figure out how we do this. Again, pause the video if you feel it's necessary. Okay, beneath our second print statement, let's type health equals health plus heal AMT and semicolon. Since our heal amount is three, they should put our player's health to seven. Let's add another print statement to check. Save your script and return to Godot. Back into Godot, we'll play our scene real quick. And boom, look at that. Seven, just as we anticipated. And honestly, that's it. Those are variables in a nutshell. We'll continue to expand on different ways to use them as we talk about more operations in the future, but just this small, short example should give you a solid foundation of understanding. No doubt you have a few more questions, and to help answer them, I've got a little homework for you. Don't be too concerned, it'd take you like five minutes max. Add float, string, and bool variables. Initialize them with any valid values and print them to the output console. Attempt to assign data of different types to different types of variables and take note of what happens. Multiply and divide your integer variables with other integers. What happens if the result should be a decimal? Mix and match int and float data types in an operation and print the results. Take note of what happens. In order to help you with the homework, here are a few notes to be aware of. When defining a float variable, the decimal must end in an F. For example, float my float equals 2.14F. This is just the compiler's way of differentiating a double decimal from a float decimal. When defining a string variable, the value must be put in double quotation marks. For example, string my string equals open quotation mark, my string value, close quotation mark, semicolon. There's nothing odd about bools. True or false are keywords, so it should be really easy to assign those. To multiply values, use the asterisk. That's in place of an X or a dot, depending on which branch of mathematics you're coming from. To divide, use the forward slash. Trust me when I say that playing around with things is the best way to learn about them. Practice and struggle are by far the best teachers, and I have nothing but faith in you. In the next video, we're going to talk about methods, what they are, how to use them, and how to write your own. We'll also talk about the concept of scope, which helps us to know where things in our code can be used. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss that video, and take care of yourself in the meantime. The best to you and yours. I can't wait to see you again.